Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to take you through this little sound effects recording project. So what I recorded are a bunch of broken acorn shells that I just picked up around my yard. I picked them up probably a year ago and I intended to make some sound effects out of them right away, but it just never happened. So I had a quiet morning here and I just decided to finally do it. So I got out a shotgun mic and I put it it's kind of just outside of frame. Maybe it's just a little too dark to see, but I think the mic is like right here. So this is just a moving blanket that's on the floor. I've got a acoustic panel right here behind the blanket. So I'm making this area kind of as dead as possible. Crunching them with my hands. I'm moving them around. I'm scooping them up. I'm dropping them. I'm dropping this heavy like stress ball onto it. So let's just play some of the sounds. And what we're going to be hearing is the raw recording. I don't have video for all of this. I just figured I'm probably going to do a video about this or promote it on social media. So I may as well take a quick video. But anyways, I recorded for 10 and a half minutes, something like that. The levels were a bit hotter than I expected. The metering on the Zoom H5 is not the best. So like these, they seem pretty flat. These spectral peaks are making it hard to see that. But if I zoom in here, these, they're a little bit flattened off. So that's my fault. So it sounds a little bit crunchy. Some people like that. I don't really know how people will use these. To me, they sort of sound like seashells or bones, like really dry bones. And, you know, maybe there's uh, someone walking through them or something like that. So anyways, I recorded these on the Zoom H5 with a shotgun mic attached, just a single mono mic. And I recorded for about 10 minutes, just getting a variety of sounds. Then I split them up into different tracks. So, so I've got a track for scooping sounds, for spilling, smack, which I then I later renamed to impact. Miscellaneous is just kind of like little bits that aren't in these other categories, stuff in between things like that. Crack is using some pliers to crack the uh, the shells. Step down is like sort of like footsteps pushing down with my hand. And step up is kind of when I release, when I move my hand. So an up and a down portion of those sounds. I don't know how useful they're going to be. They don't really sound like steps. I don't think there's quite enough variation to do that, but it's what I got. And then little drops is just a uh, Similar to spills, but not as many falling at the same time. Here's a spill. And here's a drop. So, you know, different. A scoop is just grabbing those uh, shells and scooping them up in my hand before a drop. So I've got them all kind of like zigzagged across these tracks like that. The step section was a little bit different. I mean, it's a bit like footsteps, but not exactly. As I'm doing this and cutting up different sounds, removing what's obviously too noisy, I'm also thinking about the processing. So here's what I did for that. Isotope RX Declipper. Uh, just kind of take the edge off of those uh, the distorted parts. I did multiple different tests and rendered a few files and just to see how it goes. And uh, I think it did really well. Anything above minus three runs through this declipper thing, and then it's also taking it down another 3 dB. RX4 denoiser. I, these aren't the final settings, but these are what I was listening through as I was doing the editing. Had some EQ just to, uh, I was thinking that I might actually have to cut out some of the highs because some of these sounds are pretty harsh. 
And I, I think a lot of that is just because it's such high frequency transient material. I was feeling like it could uh, turn it down. I was also checking through the spectrograph. Pretty loud. And then a brick wall limiter. So boosting it by almost 3 dB and then putting the ceiling at minus two, very fast attack time. And I was thinking that that could kind of catch some of those transient things that uh, can be a little off-putting. So this is essentially what I did on the first day. I don't think I did any effects on individual clips. So that's the first session. So this is the original file, the full length of the file, and then this is uh, kind of the, the best three minutes or so out of that. And this other session, so here's that section we were just looking at. I just kind of moved everything over and copied it over to here. And this is super ugly when I have markers visible. I will turn off all markers. So I selected everything that was on one of these tracks, copied it over to the start of the session, and then um, arranged them all in one position. And for that, I used the action reposition selected items. I did this actually a lot. So if you select some items, you run this, and I would set this to item end and 0.25. They're already in position, so I won't do that now, but um, that will just snap everything together. Actually, I can do it with um, some other items. So I could take like these items here, run that item end 0.25, and that's going to snap them all together with an even spacing between. All right, so back to the start. So I run that, and I get them all into place. And then I'm looking at individual sounds, and I'm making sure that there's kind of a consistent amount of, uh, like, it's it's tightly edited, but not uh, so much that it that makes clicks or anything at the ends. These are the impacts, and they're fairly tightly um, edited, but I didn't... I could have put them, put the transient like right there. I'm not expecting people to use these without doing additional processing or um, aligning with other things. So I figure a few milliseconds before is fine as long as it's not noisy. So it's like one millisecond or so, but pretty consistent. So here are the impacts all collected. I decided to put the declipper only on the tracks that might have that clipping distortion that I didn't want. So the smack track and the spill track have that, but the effects chain for the kind of the, the final summing of these tracks is just the denoiser EQ was bypassed. And then I decided to go with the Reaper Event Horizon limiter clipper. And then some of these individual tracks had some EQ or I mean individual files. So I was using the take effects, and this is just kind of to uh, notch out some noise there. I'll bypass this. All right, so I'm EQing before it's going through noise reduction on this top folder track. This is just to kind of get rid of the, uh, the traffic noise outside. Several of these have EQ, and it's all pretty similar. That's probably even the same frequency. Let's find another one here. Yeah, so this is just a low shelf here. Bypass. So it sounds a lot more natural removing that low rumble. After I get them all tightly edited and sounding right, I then select all of them in this section again because the beginnings and ends have changed. I'll run that reposition selected items action again just to get that spacing exactly 
the way I want it. I then ran another action called uh, set item fades to default length. And that is based on the preference here, project uh, this one, media item defaults. Default crossfade length, 5 milliseconds. So running this action, we'll apply a 5 millisecond fade to any of these items. So I just had to make sure that I wasn't going to overwrite any fades that I did actually use. There were a couple times where I had uh, items overlapping, where I was like taking out a little thump or something. Uh, they're hard to find in, when there's so many items, like this one here, where it's two items and I just took out something in the middle and made it one. So if I'm using the um, that action, that could affect the fade. I put regions around each different type of performance. So I've got spills, scoop and push, impacts, crack, steps down and up, drops and miscellaneous. So I have a region that's going to define the export length in the region manager. So then I wanted to mark where each item was within that file. So when someone goes into the exported file, it's going to be this long but I want to mark where each of these clips starts. So I'm using a script from XRAIM called Create Markers at Selected Items Snap Offset. So I just select the items and I run that. I decided to go with a plus sign for this. And so it's just going to put in markers within my time selection uh, at the start of each of these items. I had the snap offset at the start of each item, so it's going to be at the start of the item. So now I go to render, and I was using the region matrix, regions that I was exporting. Uh, it automatically sorts them by you know, the position. So I just had to do the first bunch of regions there. In the export settings, I choose to include markers only. All right, so I'll open up a new project, and I'll show you what those look like when you bring them in. So imported files look like this. There's a media queue at the start of each item. And if you're not seeing media queues, you can go into the action list. And there's an action called toggle show media queues and items. That will show and hide that. And even if they're not showing, you can use this action to uh, split at media queues. So now all these items don't need to be manually edited again. They can just be used individually after running the action. This isn't the only way to edit and organize a sample library, of course. Um, I kind of like these longer clips where you can just easily import all of them into your session and then mix and match and, and find the ones that you like rather than importing you know, 40 different impact sounds uh, that are similar using the split at media cues action makes it easier than having to zoom in and uh, manually edit again. All right, guys, so that's how I've edited this uh, sample pack. I don't know how it's going to be used or if I'm going to sell it or give it away or what yet, but hopefully this gives you some ideas of how to approach a little sound effects recording project, how to organize your session for doing the editing, how to approach the effects processing, some ideas for how to export the files. The only thing missing from these files right now is metadata. I intend to do a video on metadata and what it is and why it's important and all these kind of things. But uh, for now, I'm going to leave this video here. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.